Hi, everybody. I've got a great interview for you today. I'm here with a cast of the digital drama series Studio City in all their glory. Uh, their latest five episodes of the show are now on Amazon Prime Video. And if you have not seen it, you are missing something very unique and something special. And this is such a great show. And everybody that's on here today, what I love about it is everybody's got their moment in, in these five episodes. And it was really beautifully crafted. So Sean, first, hey, Sean Kanan is here, Anna Maria Horsford, Carolyn Hennessy, Tristan Rogers, Scott Turner Schofield, Justin Torkelson, and the Sarah Brown. Welcome everybody. Sean, I was just gonna say, what was it like uh, you went ahead and decided to film the new episodes during COVID-19? Was there, was it, was it like, let's just do this or what were the- Yeah, it, it, it was definitely daunting. I'm a, I'm a big proponent of that uh, General George Patton quote, which is uh, a good plan today executed with violent audacity is better than an excellent plan tomorrow. And, you know, frankly, um, we were up against the hard deadline that if we didn't have the shows completed and uploaded to Amazon uh, by a certain date, then we wouldn't be uh, considered for the Emmys. And I think everybody's work on the show is so wonderful that I wanted all of my actors to be considered and recognized. Um, you know, there were, there were significant challenges um, because of COVID. We, we had to have, uh, we had actually an onset doctor that was testing masks, et cetera. Um, Spectrum Television even came out and did a story on uh, on us, but it wasn't so much about Studio City. It was more about what is production like during the pandemic. And I, I just have to tell you that if it wasn't for all of these incredible people and their level of commitment, and for my wife Michelle, who is just a workhorse, um, it wouldn't have happened. And now, fortunately, we 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 got them uh, completed, and they're up, and we're so proud of them, and hope everyone will see them. Carolyn, you know, yes. you play Gloria, the executive producer of this soap opera. And is it based on Gloria Monti and all the female like, EPs in the soaps? And how did you kind of craft her? Because I did, it's I did kind not of like Gloria Monti. I, but, I, but I did know, I did know and do know Jill Farron Phelps. And so, yes, it is, it is a loving tribute to those sides of Jill that I saw. However, um, I, I never saw Jill be as, I know she was and could be, but I never saw her be as ruthless. And, and, I, and I actually don't think she was known for being as cruel and as, and as delighting in her cruelty as, as my Gloria is. So, uh, <laughs> because Sam just works my last nerve. And, and all of them, actually everyone on the show works my last nerve. Um, so I, so I, I get to have a tremendous amount of fun in being just digging the knife. Um, but it's always for a purpose and, and everything I know about Jill Farron Phelps, who I consider a friend, it's all for a purpose. And the purpose is the greater good, which is the show. And it's, it's, it, you know, she will, she will flay herself if it, if it keeps the show, you know, on air. Mm -hmm. And number two, maybe number one, we'll see. But but it's the show is the show is the priority. So At Sean and Carolyn, when you had the scene where she did that scene, she's it's always like a whirling. You're on the set, you're behind the scenes, you're talking to this one, you're doing this one, you're barking orders. That did you do that in like one? Like how many takes of that? How did you get that done? Two. Anna Marie has a call. No, <laughs> yeah. no, it's my strange line, my porno line. <laughs> You know, very. It never. I don't know where it's attached to. Some place in Russia. Okay. I think. I think that that scene that you're talking about, which is like you know the the long camera follow. Yes. Where I talk with, uh, I talk with the with the young actress, and then yeah. I talk with the guy who ends up being the first AD. Yeah. And I don't know who he is. Um, and then I and then I talk with with another actor. That I think we did in two. You. Yeah. Um, what is your name? Uh, Tim. Tim. Yeah. And and what do you do? Um, the first AD. You are the first AD, yeah. of course, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. How long have you been here, Tim? About four years. About four yeah. years. 
Okay, Tim, um, I, I need you. Uh, I need you to listen to me. So uh, you know about this novel coronavirus that's going around. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody. Yeah, knows the, about it. yeah, yeah, the Rona. I yeah. think you guys. Been call on the news. The kids. Yes, yeah. of course. <laughs> so we have not received any uh, guidance from Sacramento. We haven't received any guidance from the union. So I'm going to have to ask you, in an overabundance of caution, to start passing out masks to everybody on the set. Okay. Uh, and make sure that they keep them on at all times, except, of course, if it interferes with a scene. Yeah, of course. And then, and then of course, you just shuck them in the yeah, trash. Just, okay, yeah. yeah. Who, who gives a <laughs> Right? I mean, it's not, it's, not, it's not going anywhere anyway, right? Right, okay. We're young enough. Thank you. Yes. Well, good. You are. <laughs> okay. We shot all of these five episodes in four days. Uh, and in, in a sense, that was actually a bit of a luxury because we shot the first six in four days. Wow. Um, this... I don't think that this show under the current incarnation is possible without using actors that have had experience in daytime because they are able to make extremely good choices, extremely fast, learn voluminous amounts of dialogue on the fly and, and hit it in one or two takes. I actually made it more difficult. <laughs> <laughs> no. As is my, as is my want yeah. um, because I asked, I pitched it, can I talk about, because this, this actress tells me that she works really, really hard. And right. as I said, I pitched it to Tim, our, our incredible director. I said, can I talk about how hard she doesn't work? And, <laughs> uh, and can I compare it to everybody on, on a set who really does work hard? And, right. and that is the God's honest truth. Anybody on a set who is not in front of the camera works harder in a day than we all will in a year. That is true. So, 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 and so I said, and I would love, and that's, that's a mantra for me. So I said, I would love to be able to just announce that. And so they, he let me do it. So that was so brilliant. I made it more difficult. And Justin, what was it like working with uh, Carolyn? She kind <laughs> of working with around. Carolyn was awesome. I like made a new friend for life here. We had a really good time. I think what was really fun was just bantering ideas. Cause it was like, Sean calls me. He's like, Hey, we got this. Are you in LA? Come hang out. I'm there. And then it was like, go do this with Carolyn. Okay. I mean, it was incredible. Wow. Ms. Winton, uh, Christina is looking for you. I think she wants to talk. She wants to talk? Yeah. Maybe she maybe she wants to give me her recipe for Swedish meatballs. No, no, I think she maybe wants to Maybe she wants to, to give me a facial. Go, run, tell her I'll be right there. Okay, go, okay. fly, okay. fly, fly, fly. Swill along, my little sidewinder. We just ended up in the show, right? It was kind of yeah. like- Kind well, I knew yeah. I wanted to find something for Justin to do, but yep. I mean, I gotta, <laughs> Justin's being very modest. I have to tell you, you know, Justin came to the set and immediately was like, what can I do to help? And was effectively working as a PA and a grip. And, and we needed, there was a scene where we needed an actual Emmy. And Justin was like, oh, I've got one of those. So here's this guy, <laughs> that's an award-winning actor. He I lends the Emmy as a prop. And I was like, we gotta find something for him to do. And you know, Justin doesn't have a whole lot of lines in these shows, but I mean, there's facial expressions and the trepidation he has every time he <laughs> enters the scene with Carolyn. And I don't know if it's Carolyn or Gloria. It might be both. It's, it's, it is. Carolyn. It's a little bit of both. I'm not gonna lie. I was kind of scared. Minutes, within the first 10 minutes of meeting Justin, literally the first 10 minutes, I bark at him that he might have to shave the hair off my ass. Yeah. And he was unfazed. <laughs> We're friends now. <laughs> There you go. What? I see a spinoff coming. Between <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a spinoff show is coming with the two of them. Uh, there you go. Uh, you know, Tristan and Sarah, those scenes between the two of you as father, daughter, Doc and Lori are just so emotional. I mean, I can't think of two finer actors like doing those scenes together. They just work so beautifully. You know, I've been thinking you and I should have a chat. What do you think of the Cayman Islands? Sad. I, look, look, this time of the year between March and June is the best time to visit there. Dad. I was thinking. You know, I've never been to Mexico. Should put that in the list.
Mexico, huh? Mexico sounds like fun, Dad. Tristan, I think you do some of your finest work in this season. It's just heartbreaking. You know, when they go for the close-up on him and he's with the medication, he's making the phone call and all of that was just so, um, how was that to film? I gotta say, the one thing that stands out on this show, more than probably any other show that I've done, is that at the end of every day, I had a real sense of accomplishment. Mm. I really kind of looked at myself in the mirror and said, you know, you did something really good today. Mm -hmm. Something came out of this that maybe you don't even know yourself. Yeah. And that's the way it was. It was like that in the first series and it's been like that in the second series. And yeah, I do a lot of soap operas, different ones, but I can't say that I get quite the sense of satisfaction out of those that I get out of this. I have to say, I felt like I was watching a scene in a movie. That's mm. what I loved about so much of this. You know, Tristan and I are friends. Uh, we, we both lived down in Palm Springs. And uh, way back when, before this whole thing was starting, I said, Tristan, if, you, if you'll come on board and trust me, I'm going to show the world what I know is the acting that you can do. Something that's not Robert Scorpio, something that's not Colin, but is the, the core of who Tristan is. Because as a friend, I, I know what he's got inside and it, it gives me so much unbelievable pride that Tristan won the Emmy and is doing work that is even more interesting than the last time, which I didn't think was possible. Yeah. And then Sarah, I was wondering, this was this going through what you were going through personally? And you know, was this a difficult time to play this as a daughter losing her father in, in the acting of this for you? I was thinking about you and then watching your performance, which is always, I mean, you're Sarah Brown, so it's like always so stellar and, and real and raw, but was this more difficult for you to play at this point in time? Definitely, definitely, yeah. I lost my dad uh, two weeks later. Oh. Uh, so I imagine having to go through these scenes with Tristan and going through the and the, it was excruciating. Yeah. Yeah. So I will say that I think that Carolyn is right. They work a lot harder than we do, but I think that you're talking about physical work. And I think that with acting, there can be a tremendous amount of emotional work that you have to do. And that can be just as draining as running, you know, a 10K or anything else. Um, and, and I'm not to take away anything from the hardworking crew members just to say that also actors have process that they go through that can be very difficult. And for me, this was uh, probably the hardest um, yeah. thing I've ever had to play. Mm. To try to, I couldn't, you know, I was having a hard time controlling, uh, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. Sean, what can you say about working with Sarah? Because you play brother and sister in it. She gets to be your sister. There is a contentious relationship where she wants him to step up, Sam to step up that she feels she's handling the burden of this all herself with her with their father. Um, what can you speak to about working? Well, I, mean, I always, I never felt like I, I really had the chance to work with Sarah on General Hospital and do a lot of the stuff that I would have loved to have done with her. But I, I think it happened for a reason because I think, you know, I, I'm, I'm a very different guy than I was in those early years in General Hospital. And I think I'm a very different actor. And, and so I think things happen at the right time. Um, I, I was well aware of what Sarah was going through through and it was you know I, it was breathtaking to watch her handle this with that kind of grace uh and deliver um as, as far as uh yeah you know I mean I think uh, Lori is a much more um evolved person in a lot of ways than Sam is and she has a uh she has a very special relationship with Tristan's character and um you know Sam is a guy that is uh you know, he's a work in progress and he's still very selfish a lot of the time. And uh, I think Laurie is constantly trying to pull him out of, you know, realizing that he is the end all be all in the world and that there are other people who have wants and needs. And, you know, and I like that. I mean, Laurie in a sense is kind of like, uh, you know, a Greek chorus slash Jiminy Cricket for Sam. I love that idea. That's, That's a great, great, I mean, yeah. great analogy for the, the relationship. 
Tristan, what was it like for you working with Sarah, like in those very intense scenes? I remember just sitting, the two of you sitting across the table from each other and she's just so heartbroken that he won't get help and she says he just wants to die and give up. And she's just sitting there, you know, kind of like, okay, you want to do this or, you know, you know. Well, the great thing about it was there was never a lot of movement in it. The movement had to come from within. So, you know, I had to find a different speed to work at and yet capture what the character was all about and not leave anything out. Make sure that everything that on the, was on the page that was intended to come out made it onto the screen. This was the challenging part of it for me. Um, and I love the challenge because, you know, I don't get something like that to do every day in other shows. Uh, and this, you know, I could bring it all out and get it all down and done. And, you know, for that reason, you know, I just love Sean and what he gave me. It's, I'll never forget it. I just keep on wanting to do better. <laughs> wow. Can I, can I just, can I say watching what Sean's created and coming in? Cause I wasn't around for the first season. I was in Europe or something. I didn't see any of it. I came into this addition onto this season and watching what Sean and, and his wonderful wife have created with this show and working and seeing all these actors was the most inspiring thing I've seen in years. The I'll amount of what you guys created and how fast you made it and how well you did it. I mean, it gave me the excitement to be doing this again. It's, it's incredible. That's you guys wonderful. did so amazing. That's wonderful. Sean, you know, this has such a feel like we were talking about the look and feel of the show is gritty and now and the way yes. things should look. And then you add in these performances that everybody does. It's, it's pretty spectacular. And I, you know, you know, uh, I, got, I got to talk about Anna Maria for a second. I was just going to get to her. Oh. Okay, that's okay. I'm oh, great. No, I was just getting to you, and then this. No, that's fine. She's quietly sat there and has probably done 150 films. I was watching, you know, I was watching a long came a spider a couple weeks ago, and there she is next to Morgan Freeman. I mean, this woman has done more than all combined, and and you know, when you bring an actress in like that who has such amazing film experience, even though it's in a part that's like a supporting role, I just think it layers everything and it supports us and um you know to, to Anna Maria's credit I called her in the evening the the, the evening before a 7 a.m call and I think she was just getting back from Atlanta or something filming New York and I where was it pose, pose. Oh. and she and I just got <laughs> back and I was exhausted and I knew then I was insane because <laughs> said, but, but she uh, didn't she Would you do me a favor? And I said, a favor, Sean? I hadn't seen <laughs> Sean. We had worked together on Bold and Beautiful. Right. And I hadn't seen you in about four years or five years. You're like and a I favor. Said, Sean. And said, Would you do me a favor? Um, somebody dropped out. And if you could just do this scene tomorrow, the call is about 7 a.m. <laughs> and I was sitting on the side of my bed and I couldn't move. And this is when you know you're crazy. And I said, um, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What is that madness? You know, what? I'll tell you, I'll tell you what it is. What? No, there's that there's that expression for the love of the game. For the yeah. love of the game. And, yeah. Marie, and we all do it for the love of the game. Because yeah. ain't, no, ain't nobody getting rich on this yet. Um, <laughs> but everybody is uh just giving of themselves and of their soul. And I mean, I was so touched that Anna Maria basically was like, I will, you know, wake up at 5 a.m. and go do this after having flown and worked. And, yeah. and there was, she never scripted yet either. I mean, it was like a complete, yeah. hey. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. let me just say, Anna Maria, you were so fabulous in this because yeah. it was just so real, like just the way you delivered the dialogue. This is why you're who you are. It was just like, she just delivered this dialogue. It, she just embodied this character. You know, she, I thought it was- I love, I love great. acting. I love mm. acting. And it really, you know, people always talk about the money, the check, the debt. And I said, I wish somebody could pay you for the joy you get from right. doing it. That's why I tell anybody, if they have another choice- Do it. That other choice. Do, Do it. it. <laughs> Do it. Because- well, go, to, go to college first. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you can't get paid for it. It has to come out of you. And just 
going to the hotel that morning. The person doesn't know you. I said, I need a parking space to this and that. You have to do it all on your own. But once you get there, the, the joy that comes in your little heart to say, oh, oh, it's not about a dollar. It really is what happens in here. What Mr. Tristan said, that you, you know what you are when you start out in this business. What you don't know is how much joy you continue to get from it, no matter how many other jobs you have, no matter how many other people you work with. What he was talking about, which, you know, you really want to cry. He says, nobody's ever asked me to do this part. It was still a part in him that wanted to come out, still a scene in him, still an emotion in him. And you say, oh, we all are buried with that, that bad scene called being an actor, you know, long-term <laughs> actor. It really is. And if you don't, if you're not born with it, you can't, you can't learn it. Well, you had several scenes, not just a few, like you were- Well, we so won't talk about that. Sean <laughs> promised me one. He said one. You had more than one. One. <laughs> one. one. She was so good, we had to give her more. Yeah. Mm. You, know? Listen, you get a commodity. I, I knew I had her there. Was, like, so was that one Here's day? It. Were you there one day taping? No. 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 no, two. Come on. It turned into two. No, it's never what they promise you, but- um, the people were really good. And then you start seeing I mean, all these familiar faces and you so I know that one, I know this one. But it's, um, it, it felt good. It really felt good. I'm always scared of the behind the scenes mm -hmm. um, shows because it makes me nervous because the reality of what's behind the scene is heartbreaking. What actors go through, what the executives go through, it's heartbreaking, you know? But um, this one turns out, hopefully, we'll cross our fingers that people don't mind it. Because audiences sometimes don't want to see the reality. Did you like playing a Hollywood type? You were a very Hollywood type. Well, we don't call it Hollywood. <laughs> we don't call it Holly business type. Business type. Like Carolyn <laughs> said, yes. <laughs> Never saw the dark side of that woman. Believe me, she had it. Okay. <laughs> but um, it's, you know, it's, it's what you do. It's the game, the game. Shut my eyes to see me, Jolene. Brian, who is your daddy? You can be whatever you want, as okay. long as you have something good for me. Listen, a script came across my desk the other day. Who's the first person I thought of? Your client, Sean. Sam. But... Right, the, right, yeah, the aging soap star. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a perfect project for him, okay? You know, um, cast it right. It's a two-header, you know, mm -hmm. female co-star. Who's directing? Tim Scott Jr. Tim Scott Jr. I don't think I've ever heard of him. Oh, I'm shocked. You should. He's flying high, the hottest thing going. Every studio wants him. We got him for this, OK? It's a thriller, so it's light on the hand-to-hand -hand combat and the explosion, OK? And it's a good way for him to stretch his acting muscle. OK, well. It was Sam. Mm -hmm. My name was Sam. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And his acting muscles are stretched, trust me. You know I have the utmost respect for this man. I saw his reel. Okay, come on now. Come on. I got you. All right. I'm going to have the um, casting associate get in touch with you. Okay? Got. So here we go. So, Max, you know, you had these very, uh, the before these new five episodes, we left on the other part of it where, you know, the uh, he loses one of the members of his. Yeah, a group, um, and I love how the transgender community is given a voice in Studio City. Um, what did you think about that? Number one, and then at least the pickup of this, where he gets to gets to let out his feelings on her, the death. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, first of all, that Sean and Michelle just created the space and said you know, seeing me and seeing what I have to bring that it's not, it's not just this sort of one note thing, but really like, can I really bring all of myself? And this is the whole thing about transgender actors. We don't want to just be trans. We want to be actors. Right. You know, I mean, I feel honored to go after Anna Maria just now and that speech, because that's exactly it, right? It's like, this is what I came to bring, right? So that Sean and Michelle would create that space and then say, hey, could you, could you bring your friends? You know, <laughs> which was a lot of fun um, for all of us. And then, yeah, especially in the intervening time, so, so much emotion 
has, you know, there's been so much. So much. Just so much. I mean, for all of us and also the just mess uh, within the community and really specific to Hollywood, people using their their platform for ill to, to like come after Terrible. a group of people who, who just are trying to survive. You yeah. know what I mean? So I really had a lot to bring to that um to that scene and and again was just so grateful to be able to let it out and to let that be a voice that people are actually going to listen to it is such a privilege to be listened to as a transgender person about no, what you are going through you know scott's being really modest because scott has actually made history uh he is the first male trans actor to ever be nominated for an emmy which makes studio city the first show that has, has ever had a male actor, male trans actor nominated. So we're really proud of that. Um, you know, I, I'd known Scott for a while. He was also in my, uh, my book, Success Factor X. Uh, and he hosted an event down in Palm Springs and was on Bold and the Beautiful. But Scott, I don't, I don't remember if we met while you were filming Bold and the Beautiful or not. I think we might have. We had but that I, wedding. Were you at that wedding? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> wedding. Yeah. Yeah. That but, one wedding. That right? wedding. No, and you were no. And, well, you were my daughter, the transgender. Maya. 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 He was oh, Maya's no. friend. Yeah. I, I just yeah. was really, I was really concerned that I, I knew we wanted to have this LGBTQ story, but I wanted to be very clear with Scott that, you know, this wasn't going to be sort of a stunt casting thing and that I very much want Scott, the actor, to play his character that is not always dealing with trans issues Right. because he's incredibly talented um and and you know you say that we gave you a space and I'm, I'm glad we've been able to do that but I, I think you're really pioneering showing people that you know exactly what you said just because somebody's um, a trans individual does not mean that you know you only hire them to play roles with a trans storyline and that's absolutely not our intention and I'm super looking forward to where we get to go with this because I know where we're going. And that, you know, you know, we set it up, we had to have the re reaction to it and where we're going in terms of exactly what you're saying, Sean. Um, I'm so excited. I'm so excited for that. And I can't wait for you all to see it. So coming up for everybody. Yeah. I, I, well, I love the Dr. Brantley. It's Brantley, right? Yes. Dr. Brantley, you know, that he's a character on the show. So when you guys film the scenes that are the soap within the, the soap opera part of it, because there's so many soap tropes in there and it's so like things we've all laughed at and seen. They're the you best. The best. Do you not <laughs> laugh through those scenes when you're doing them or how do you no. get through them? We laugh. <laughs> laugh. That's a lot. We do. You are. <laughs> yeah, I do anyway. Now have all of you seen the entire new five episodes? Have you watched yeah. everybody's work? Yeah. <laughs> And yes, Sarah, what do you think of yep. the whole thing? I was blown away. I mean, again, I, I continue to be blown away by the project. Uh, Sean came at me with this project sort of very similar to the way he did with Anna Maria. It was just a couple of days <laughs> right before we shot. And in this, this, this bunch of six that we did, it was the, like the day before or something. And my dad had just, he had moved in and he was dying in my living room and I didn't have anyone to watch him and uh and you know for the love of the work and for the love of my dad who really wanted me to do it um I called my mom and she came and she took care of him and I went to, went ahead and did it but I, I was I just was I was it was stunning I really uh I, I there were so many moments in this second batch that were unexpected for me, let's say that I, you know, I didn't have a script and the scene that Tristan and I shot at the end of the last episode where um, Sean and I confront him, we got that scene maybe a half an hour before we shot it. I mean, it was, you know, com had completely been rewritten and, um, um, and that's what we're doing, doing it on the fly. And I am blown Pretty away nice. by what everybody's oh. bringing. Sean, I was just gonna say, Ron Moss isn't here with us today because he's filming a movie. Um, but the fact that you have Ron Moss playing himself, playing a version of himself, who's got a vendetta with Sam, is no, the biggest thing, and his, he's amazing in it. He's I'm great. Gonna, I'm gonna tell you guys a funny story that I bet none of you know. I can okay. tell it, I can tell you why I can tell it, it was because Ron told it first. So you guys know that Ron has a show called Ron's Garage, right? right. 
So he invites me to come and do his show, Ron's Garage, and we're doing it, and it's a, a lot like this. And then out of, uh, out of the blue, Ron goes, so what's it like to kiss my wife? And my jaw dropped, and the reason was that Ron and Devin had split up for about two minutes, and <laughs> Devin came over to my place one night, and we watched television. That's <laughs> all. I was a gentleman, and we watched television. So the scene you see with me and Ron, when Ron goes, do you still want to kiss my wife? That's <laughs> all real. That is not. <laughs> so so it, it, if you know that, it makes that scene that much funnier. You won. I was the runner up. You were the soap opera fan award winner. The fans chose you, not me. Why are you so angry? You accused me of ballot harvest. I, not my words. Not my words. Oh, but they were. I, Listen, I can't control what people are saying out there. I mean, you know, I did my best to dispel that. You even put it out there. I was sleeping with the guy that was going to give me the money. It was a joke. I, I, that, oh, really? All right, you know what? I had a little too much to drink that night. I, uh, How's the drinking going for you? Still want to kiss my wife? Oh, come on, man. I, look, can't we just put this behind us? It was so long ago. And, you know, you, you guys are doing so well. And I, I just... You really want that movie, don't you? Yeah, I do. How bad? What will you do? It would mean a lot to me. I'll give you the number of chances you have to do it. No. No. Uh, not even that one. Oh, that's the number of chances you have. You know, I just felt that we saw Ron in a way that, you know, people are very used to seeing when Ron played Ridge as kind of a very, yeah. you know, a very serious guy. You know, and, and I mean, I, I think Ron is like one of the funniest things in Studio City. I, mean, oh, I, I had a tough time keeping it together working yeah. with him. Yeah. And in the end analysis there, doesn't he basically give him the part? He's got the part, but he has to take acting lessons from Ron Moss. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the part. But here's, but here's the thing, and it got cut. It actually was a lot worse. So Ron goes into this whole speech about how I have to be willing to do things and go places that I've maybe never gone before. I now uh, will have to take uh, acting lessons from Ron Moss to be in his, uh, in his film. Yeah, because when Anna Maria's part came in and said, I was shocked that she's told the agent, his agent, that he got the part. I thought she was going to say he didn't get the part because of the Ron Moss thing. So I was like, oh, that's... <laughs> <laughs> and it how was... about our director, Tim? I mean, you know, Tim played the director. Tim was there as the director. He was, he was oh. flipping hilarious. So where would you like to see this go, Sean? Are you going to film more? What's, is there a plan? So I think <laughs> we're going to... We're going to see uh, what happens during award season. And, and it's not just a function of, you know, seeing if we win any awards. Um, we have to cut together everybody's Emmy reels and do all that. So we still have a lot of work on the production side to do. Um, we very much are focused on doing uh, season two. Um, in, in order to sell the show worldwide, any show, you have to have a certain number of um, minutes for content. Right. And they're now just about at the point where we have enough. And very much like, and I'm not trying to segue here, but very much like how Cobra Kai went from uh, YouTube Red to Netflix and then became syndicated throughout the world in different languages, that's what we really want to do. I mean, my, my goal is to uh, sell it worldwide, get it translated into other languages. And, you know, here's where the, here's where the, um, the conundrum comes in. We're having a lot of success in its current format, which is you know, a, a digital series that is shorter form, obviously, than a, than a regular 30-minute uh, show. Mm -hmm. And as much as I would love to move to a 30-minute show with a, a real budget and allow all of my actors to have more time to develop their story, there is the potential pitfall that, you know, will, will the show still work if we yeah. expand the format? I happen to think it will because I have complete confidence in them and I hope they have confidence in me. Um, so hopefully if we're able to sell it the way that I like and, 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 you know, have an increased budget, I would like to see it become, you know, a, a full fledged, uh, 30 minute show. Uh, that's, that's kind of my goal. Awesome. Carolyn, your final thoughts on this season and what do you think of the show? Uh, more eyeballs need to be on it because it is such an extraordinary series. It's not a soap opera and, and, and. It's, you know, it's, as Sean said earlier, it will, in previous interviews, it's his love letter to soaps. It's 
funny, but it's so incredibly profound. And as I think this needs a, certainly a nationwide, if not a worldwide audience, because it does, it's, again, it's, it's, it's very funny, but it really gives everyone a, a backstage look and it's not always pretty. It's certainly not glamorous. And I, but I think it's incredibly honest. Everything, every moment of this series has been incredibly honest. And that I think is what keeps the critics loving it. What keeps the people coming back and wanting to see it. What keeps us coming back and wanting to do it. So uh, I just, I want, I want as many uh, individuals on this planet to see this show as possible. With almost all of these roles, for sure, Sarah Scott, Tristan, uh, and, and Carolyn, there, there were no other choices. That's, this was, these were written for these people. And I specifically, you know, Gloria in my head always was Carolyn. And, uh, you know, Carolyn came and did the initial read through, what, it was a couple of years ago now, Carolyn, right? Yeah. yeah. And so there was just never any question in my mind that these were the actors I had to have. And what I was going to say to Sean was, I think you and I, I did tell you this, but I think this is such, probably my favorite role you've ever done because we get to see the drama, the humor, like it's all there and it's so tangible and you see his pain and he's funny and he's throwing these horrible circumstances that life throws at us. You yeah. know, he's hit left and right with it every which way from the soap opera to in his real life and you balance it all and it's so, it's, it's heartbreaking in a way. Like you feel yeah. for this guy, even when, you know, it's funny. Yeah, you know, I, I, I feel like you initially see Sam and he's, you know, he's a guy in a soap opera and you assume he must be making a lot of money and he's got a beautiful girlfriend and this and that. And you realize as the, the layers of the onion get peeled away that this guy is not only full of, of faults and foibles, but he has all sorts of issues. And he's a guy that really is just trying to figure it out, you know, and, uh, you know, trying to become a better, more evolved guy but like you said, life keeps throwing stuff at him. And, you know, in, in a lot of ways, it, Sam is, Sam is, I think, kind of a, 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 a less cooked version of Sean. Um, I think that Sam is a lot like maybe Sean was, you know, 15 years ago. But, but this character is, is very close to a lot of who I am. And, you know, the fact that I have the latitude as the creator of the show to tailor my, my dialogue a lot and, you know, it, it really is a tremendous asset. And so, yeah, it's one of my favorite characters too. Uh, and, it's, and it's rapidly becoming my most favorite character. Good. Tristan, I just wanted to give you just a moment. Um, I was reading, I know John Riley passed and I was reading your beautiful words about him. And I know the fans will see this soon. So I just wanted to give you a moment to say anything about John and his passing because I know how close you were. Um, well, I knew this was coming, but knowing it's coming, and dealing with it at two different things altogether. There was no less of a shock. And, you know, I remember the moment it just brought back an incredible flood of memories. I mean, my brain was overloaded. And um, it, it'll be a while before I can lay this to rest. Uh, he'll be missed. I remember saying to him once, why did you quit? And he looked at me and he said, because I had the best of it. And he said, I've got nothing else to prove. And I thought, wow, what, is, what does that make me? Uh, <laughs> uh, Wait, those were so many classic moments with you guys. And I was watching some of them on YouTube and you saw everybody uh, posting the wedding of, you know, Tiffany and, and Sean. And That's a classic. No uh, one classic. ever did a wedding like that or never no, but will. And the thing was, we got that in one take. Brilliant. Brilliant. And nobody knew what was coming. <laughs> was it ad-libbed or you knew? No, well, it wasn't ad-libbed, but nobody knew that her name was Crumholz. So those were genuine reactions. I mean, when I heard that, I fell on the floor. Elsie <laughs> May Crumholz. Yeah. <laughs> so and Tiffany's real name was Elsie May Crumholz, and they discover this when she's doing the vows at the wedding. To Sean, and they all break up laughing, and she's get, she's beside herself. I mean, it was such brilliant acting from you, Sean, uh, John, uh, Sharon, Wyatt. It was just great. Elsie made crumbles. Isn't that correct? 
Yeah, would you just get on with it, please? Uh, yes. Elsie May Crumholst, <laughs> would you take this man to be your husband? <laughs> to love together in the covenant of marriage? <laughs> would, would you love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, and be faithful to him as long as you both shall live? That's it. John always had a great sense of timing for a comedy. Yeah. Terrific. I want to thank Michael. Is it Michael Davis who played your agent, Sean? Oh, oh no. MJ. Michael, Michael, Michael J. Bizarre. Bizarre. Michael, yes. I want to thank him because he got the role. I mean, he was so wonderful to work with. And I have to say, really a nice guy. And I think we're going to be yes, friends for a long time. That's the good part about working that you always meet a friend. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody that's that. saved in your life. It's almost like God said, I got you, to, I want you to meet this guy. I want you to meet so-and-so, this lady. And this is the wonderful business that brings these strange human beings to you that open up your life for a whole nother experience outside of just being on film. That's really something, you know? Cause I think Sean, I saw you at Cindy Cowan's house. Remember? Right. Yeah. That party. Yeah. Oh. Anyway, thank Michael, and thank you for enjoying. You love acting. You love this business. I've never seen somebody who loves it so much. You do. And you pick up all the moments that we actors fight about and do. And we mm. don't know if anybody notices those. Oh, I, yes. Yeah. You do. You know, I see it. I mean, I love I literally love the I'm on the actor's side, you know what I mean? Like I mm -hmm. watch the creative process and I can see the creative process. I mean, I studied acting when I was younger, you know, before I went on the other side of the business and everything. So uh -huh. I, I understand it, you know, and I, I know what it takes from, you know, um, covering television and daytime for 35 years now. It's like, I know what's real, good, not good. At least yeah, I- it's cool, when, it's cool when people pick up on the subtleties, you yes. know? Yeah, it's, it's such a it, it makes you feel so good because not everybody does. And so exactly. someone says, you know, the way you walked or whatever, you're like, oh, you yeah. saw my choice. Cool. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. I think some people just watch the totality and they're not like, oh, my God, how did they, yeah. you know, that's what I want to know. Like when you guys had that camera literally up in your face because they were close up on you. Was that what was that like, Scott? Like it's right there and you're trying to cry and do your thing. And was it daunting or what? Or is no. it just like more intimate and it's fine actually i felt it actually like i felt the intensity even more if that makes sense we lost one of the girls she killed herself and oh my god i just can't stop thinking about it you know i'm so sorry i just wish she called you know like i wish she texted me like i thought we connected in that moment you know, like, and I promised her it was going to get better. Like, I'm an idiot. It's not going to get better for her. She's a black trans girl. She had a life expectancy of 37 years if she made it that far. I mean, you can't even go on the internet. They're just, like, putting hate out into the world because they can for the likes. Saying we're mentally ill, we're sexual deviants, we're not real. I'm trying my best. I'm doing everything I can. I'm showing up and it's not enough. I had sort of a peripheral awareness. I was very focused on what I was doing. And, and especially like, I'm not, I actually physically can't cry. So get like making that happen is actually very difficult for me. Um, and how, you know, how do you work around that? And crying is not crying. I'm just trying not to cry, all that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But so having this like awareness of the whole room you know, really into the intensity. It, it, that was actually, as an actor, such an amazing experience. It empowered me to keep going and to go further. Uh, so actually, I loved it, you know. Yeah, I'm sorry, can't cry? You yeah. have to ask. Got it. I see Carolyn too is going like, well, how, what? what do you mean you can't cry? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, it's just, mean? I don't know how to explain it. Like, Oh, I can face. introduce you to some people that will make you cry. <laughs> <laughs> or we can bring you some onions on set. Uh, I'd like to try.
That's great. <laughs> Please don't. Marilyn no, might be invitation. able to make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> not an invitation. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I just, it's like, it's one of those things that I just can't do. And I don't do it in, in my regular life either. And um, so, but again, just that like intensity of focus, that was what kept leading me on what felt like the right path artistically. Awesome. Well, guys, I know you don't have a lot more time, but I want to thank you all so much for coming together with me today to do this. I really want to tell you, um, the work was just beautiful and everyone had their moment. Everyone, it was very connected. I felt the whole thing. Um, and I hope really great things in the future for this thing. You know, all great little pro all projects start small and then, <laughs> you know, unless you've got like millions of dollars behind you, but I'm hoping this will be one that is it, that be, that's very special because it seems to me to be that. And it's gotten better and better. Like I even think these five were better than the others. The other ones were great. So that's what I think. So thank you, Carolyn. Thank you, Scott. Tristan, always great to see you. Justin, my God, so good to see you. Good Sarah, to see you. <laughs> I love you. Anna Maria, thank you so much. Great to see you. Right. Sean, all the best. <laughs>